Clandestine Records present Nail on the Head. A new record by JC Layer. And on the next minute, we'll gonna know everything about his new work, the songs, and the recording sessions. JC Layer is back with a brand new record called Nail on the Head. The recordings began in April 2010, when he started composing some of the songs for the new record. At first, he was insecure about the finishing result, but soon he began to develop his songwriting and producing. His latest album was Say Don't Look What, that he considers to be his masterpiece. As he stated then, I feared that I could never do such a better work again. Once again I tried to, to explore all musical styles as possible because um, I always try to sound different from on from record to record, and um, this time uh, I think I've done um, uh, a quite new stuff uh, on my on my personal legacy. One of the first songs he started working on was Thunder of Lightning. A new wave tune, reflecting his reluctance about society. The lyrics talk about UFOs and aliens, that Gus says that in reality, we're not about aliens, but about people and society. It's also probably that the lyrics reflects his feelings on musical critics, with whom he never had a great relationship. He would later recall that as a creator and artist, he don't understand the criticism around him, from the people who writes musical reviews, and he considers the musical critics to be a tremendous pressure for composers and musicians. It's a very new wave tune. I was inspired by a new wave and uh, disco because uh, disco. I, I always loved disco a lot from the 70s because of the of the groove from the drums and especially the bass. So the bass I tried to play on. Uh, Sound of Lightning is completely disco sound, is um, sort of uh, inspired by the late 70s uh, bands like Chick and Ab and Blondie and the kind of stuff. Thunder of Lightning He said that he wanted the beat and bass to sound as late 70s disco sound. Although three bass players were invited to play on the track, None of them got time, so Gus took the bass as well. And even if he uses the guitar most than piano, or any other instrument, he always felt that his real talent was as a bassist. So Gus took the lead on every track, and tried to make the bass sound as the preeminent instrument. About the vocals, Gus stated that he felt more confident and comfortable on his singing. It was uh, different from everything that I've ever done before. It's the same way moments of inspiration were. Seems my moments of inspiration going down. Moments of inspiration was a completely new challenge for Gus. A number consisted on R and B, developed to catch the younger audiences. He felt that a female voice would perfectly fit on the track, so he invited Susanna in colors to join him. And it was very fun because um, I found Susanna, which was done such a brilliant job. I decided to to put out the part as a, as a sort of hip hop influence, contemporary R&B, as people call today. Although the song was inspired by soul music, Gus even tried to approach the hip hop. You can give to yourself to prove yourself, and not to leave on a shameless hell to prove yourself. The best of all solutions shows Gus turning into indie rock. A very strong beat, a melodic bass line, echo in the voice and the powerful guitar. He says this song was inspired by some of the current bands he loved, such as Arctic Monkeys or Last Campesinos. The first verses of the lyrics talks about the creative process of the album. Also a philosophical and poetic side of his writing is shown on the lines, if there's a logic to live, if we get more than we give, if life is short, I believe, 
the best of all solutions is to run away. If there's a logic to live, if we get more than we give, if life is sure, I believe the best of all solutions is to run away. But the song, that would be the first single, was very easy to create it. Pray for me, uh, really, the melody really came out of the blue, don't know how, and it was uh, composed and recorded on uh, only 48 hours, so um, it was very, very easy to create, uh, especially the lyrics, because sort of, uh, it's really an open letter, you know. Pray For Me was composed, recorded, mixed, and finished on only 48 hours. Written as an open letter to his friends and listeners, the song actually became one of the favorites among his followers. I've done electronic before, but never have done um, a, a truly electronic pop song uh, as I've done with uh, Pray For Me. And it only got four chords, you know. <laughs> then I added the cellos and I thought it would be beautiful. And I'm very happy about the bass also. And uh, on the vocals, I use uh, a flanger. And I really don't know how the song came out. I just want to, to write the song to, to talk about the moments that I'm going through professionally. And same way, it will be a song which I will open my heart to all the listeners and friends. For this new record, three old songs were recorded. Play and Sally Wants to Be a Star, both sung in English, and a Portuguese one with the French title La Femme. J.C. Dea felt these songs were never recorded properly, so he picked up the tunes to rearrange and re-record. Play is a song he dedicated to this musical hero, John Lennon. The song was inspired by George Harrison's words on Lennon. Harrison said that John lived his life like if he was taking a role on a play. The song was written in 2005, when Gus was 20 years old. Only his voice and piano is heard on this one, a very intimate number. Sally wants to be a star, it's the opposite. This punk pop tune is addressed to who's who simply want to be famous with no reason at all. La Femme sounds as a cabaret number, with the opening piano, and the French words who give an exotic touch to the song itself. Once again, as it happened on all the songs such as Humber or Playing With Fire, Billy Ray is the drummer behind the skins. Mm. The vision of a thin fat ale is what the song is about. Full Portuguese lyrics on the verses, and French on the chorus, using a simple phrase. But several French words can be heard such as glamour or savoir faire. How we feel is the seventh track on the record. The lyrics are quite heavy. It's all about being lyrically direct and honest on the words, says Gus. The acoustic ballad of the album, It's I'm Sad. The last song to be sung in English. The song was born with a simple demo. Gus was very happy about his vocals, and he decided to leave it that way. Added background noise, and used the original demo on the finished track. Now's the time to break all makeup We must find what we deserve I don't plan to record a new album next year. I hope I can dedicate next year, 2012, playing gigs, because that's really what I want. When I'm at the stage, although I like the feeling, the thing is uh, I feel kind of insecure because uh, I don't like to have so many people staring at me. Whoa.